by the way, in the bread and butter class, we will be discussing these issues in the weeks and months ahead. It will be a great study on the Trinity and other issues that we talk about so much in the church or sometimes simply take for granted. This relationship is based in part on submission. Jesus said this when he's here on earth. Here's this son of God, this man who does miracles, this man who heals blind eyes, who makes the lame walk, raised the dead. Here's this God-man Jesus. And he refers to God the Father in this way. I have come to do the will of my Father. I have come to submit to the will of my Father. That was his desire. That was the desire of the Son was to be submission to the Father. When he went to the cross, what did he pray in the garden? He said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But rather, not my will, but your will be done. Submission to the Father. And this relationship is eternal. It has always been, it will always be. There is a perfect unity within the relationship of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Submission was not negative. It was something honorable. It was something blessed. It was something that simply created the unity of the Godhead. Let me put another heart up here. See if my hearts get better as I write. That's a little bit better, isn't it? <coughs> this picture is of the father and the mother, the relationship under God. In all the household, in all relationship, we need God as the head. Let me see if you're dating or want to date, you haven't gotten married, you're getting married. Let me tell you something. The greatest you, thing you can do as a couple, as a, as a man or as a woman, is have God as the head of your foundation, of your relationship. Don't let him be added on to that relationship. Let him be the focus, the foundation of that relationship. If that is your foundation, you're going to have success. If he's part of that relationship, when problems come, and problems do come. Now, Jill and I, over the years, have, have traveled many miles, and we have had confrontation with just elements of our travels. But the two of us have always been in unity, in love. And because God is our foundation, our relationship is always nice and solid. And I thank God for that. If God is a foundation, the relationship will endure the storms of life. So then you have the husband and the wife. And we have this concept of submission. The exact same thing we see in God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. In fact, this very word, submission, you find in 1 Peter as well. Chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. Where it says, submit to the Lord. Women, submit to the Lord and your husband. Submit to them. Just as you submit to kings, to authorities... Or the governors. 1 Peter 3 1 says, Wives, in the same way, be submissive to your husbands. And he's talking about that second chapter of 1 Peter. In the same way, wives, be submissive to your husbands as we are submissive to those in authority. Again, the word is not a negative concept, but rather a positive one. It's respect and honor. It's this positive concept of submission. Today we have this, this idea that submission is a negative. I want to present to you a truth. Submission is not a negative. It is a blessing of God. And if I understand that, God will bless it. And let's take this one step further and do one more heart. This has to be my best heart yet. Pretty good, isn't it? They're getting better. If I had another 17 boards, it'd actually look pretty nice by the time I got done. This final one 
We're going to change the dynamics just a little bit. We have a husband. We have a wife. We have children. The picture of the home. Now we have no problem having our children submit to us, do we? That's never really an issue. We want them to obey us as they should. We want them to respect us as they should. We want them to honor us as they should. So on these sides, we have full acceptance of submission, but we come to here and we say, man, I just don't understand that. Let me just say something. Submission is not a negative concept. It is a concept created by God. It's one of honor. It's one of blessing. Because just as the wife submits to the husband as the Christ, the husband man is supposed to be willing to sacrifice his very life. Now that's a pretty good trade-off. Submit, and he protects and provides. That's a great picture of submission. Well, certainly, you can imagine, here I am, a career young woman. I have my own job, my own ministry. <laughs> and then, along comes the long-awaited proposal for marriage from one Terrence Hall. <laughs> long-awaited. <laughs> in fact, um, when Terrence proposed marriage, I was on staff at a church. <laughs> and he was also on staff at a church. So the question, of course, would come up, where would we, where would we minister and live? But you know, they're really we did, I don't remember even talking about it, because I had a good understanding, praise God, I'm afraid to turn my back on you now, I had a good understanding of this right here, and the teaching that I received, was they called it the line of authority. God is such an amazingly smart God of order. Everything, you know, just the way we're created, the way everything works, is all done on purpose. I um, just read that if the temperature in the water of a coral reef varies by only one or two degrees, the coral reef will die. Now, I've had the opportunity to go snorkeling in coral reef areas. It's nothing like the National Geographic on TV. Beautiful. The colors are so vivid. And yet, to think that God is so precise in his order, he has a specific plan. And this line of authority, God, Son, Spirit, God, Husband, Wife, this is an exact science. So when this young career woman got this proposal of marriage, I, did, I don't think we discussed it. I knew I would resign my position and I would go join my husband in his position. So now here I am 25 years later and I'm a Grammy. I'm a Grammy, and last week I got to be with my grand girls. And often we went places and I had to hold our three-year-old granddaughter's hand, right? So we would be amongst people and I'm holding her hand. Sometimes we would be together, like shopping. Terrence would be on one side of Mary Lee and I would be on the other. And she knows this game. She holds our hand, and then we count to three. And she jumps, and she takes a big step forward. And she thinks it's really cool. <laughs> three again. When they're three, it's cool. Yeah. Eight so, girls don't like doing that game anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, also, like say we're getting out of the car in a busy parking lot. She knows right away. She hangs on. She grabs your hand. She's not allowed to go away from you because if she were to, of course, we as parents, grandparents, understand it would be dangerous. So our three-year-old granddaughter understands the importance of submission to what the authority in her life requires. She doesn't understand all the implications of, you know, a car accident or whatever that would be. But she does understand because she's been forced. <laughs> she's been forced to submit. Now there were times when I tried to get our granddaughter to submit and it wasn't so easy. She didn't want it. You know, sometimes we don't want to submit. We don't want to do what we know is best for us. We just kind of fight against it. 
But submission is a good thing. It's a positive thing. And I'm very thankful. I've never once regretted that God brought Terrence into my life. Amen. And that I got to su <laughs> submit to him. Yep. He's never once said to me, you're the wife. You have to do what I say. He has never, ever said that to me. He has never forced me because I am mature enough to understand. Now, if you're not mature enough to understand that, I invite you to ask God to help you to grow, to, to become, to, to mature, to grow, and to accept God, to trust Him. I trust Terrence. I gave my life to him as his wife, and I trust that if we were in disagreement, and I saw it one way, and he saw it another way, I do, I honestly trust that after discussion, if I totally disagreed with him, I would still do what he says is right. Because God has put him in that position. Fortunately, we've never had that happen, have we? <laughs> One of the reasons submission works is not because of authority. Submission works because of value we place on the other person. Because of respect and honor we place on the other person. That's why submission can work well, is because of honor and respect. You know, when I talk about value, there are many things we can look at that are of great value. Things that have special meaning to us. When Jill and I got married, we exchanged rings in our many wedding vows. And many times that is a traditional way, and that, that is the case. I'm on my third wedding ring now. Uh, one, one wedding, was, three rings. Yeah, one, three rings, one wife. But um, one of the rings was stolen. <laughs> Uh, and then she bought a replacement ring for me, which I'll wear on this hand. And then when we got to America, she bought another ring, which I'll wear on this hand, because then in any country of the world, I'm married. <laughs> so we're in good shape. The wedding ring represents value. It's something that we are giving of value to someone that we marry. We're respecting. We have this, this part of submission that is really blessed of God. But the reason it is successful is because of honor or value. Something we have placed our heart into, an investment. Now, as guys, we generally like cars. How many guys like cars? I love cars. All shapes, sizes, and years. I love old cars. I have an old car in America. It's an old Mustang. It's a 1965 Mustang. Totally rebuilt. It's my toy. I don't ever drive it. It sits in a garage covered up. But I like it. And it's mine. But the bottom line is, it's just a car. It is just a car. It has no value outside of what it is. It's not eternal. It's not enduring. As nice as it is now, there will come a time when it will be worth nothing. It's just a car. Things are not as valuable as the relationships that we create. Because the relationships last all through life where things come and go. We can buy a new car. I was just talking to my son the other day. He bought a used car not long ago. It was a little Subaru, just a used one for uh, running around. And it's, he likes Subarus. And this is this older Subaru car. And he likes it. And he's always wanted a Subaru. And he finally bought one. And he loves the car. And he said, no, Dad, I'm looking at another car I really like. <laughs> he just got this one. He's already looking at the next one. Because that's what it is with an item. We always want the next thing. How many have bought more than one cell phone in the last year? Or in the last month? Or in the last two days? We change valuable items like electronics constantly. They cost a lot, but we'll quickly shell out more money to buy a new one when the newest gadget comes out. Now, unlike me, I don't even have a cell phone that works. Because <laughs> I can't see them without my glasses. So I don't ever use them. They're an item. Doesn't matter how nice they are, they will pass and we'll get a new one. But there's something enduring about a relationship 
When you can stand with a person, 